And so what are the chances of him becoming president again in 2024? I guess this is the big question. As I say, I don't follow American politics that closely, but I know that Biden is not particularly popular. He's had the Afghanistan uh, mess. He's got the inflation, of course. He's printed a huge, huge amount of uh, uh, money. Things are not looking particularly great economically or militarily. Um, does that mean that Trump is now a shoe in or has the novelty kind of worn off? Is he getting it too old? What do you think? No, in fact, I mean, he's still uh, four or five years younger than uh, than Joe Biden. And so, yeah, but he's uh, too I, old, right? <laughs> Well, right, but I'm but I'm saying that uh, President Trump seems like someone who's 20 years younger than than he actually is. Uh, so right now, if the election were tomorrow, President Trump would walk away with the Republican primary and walk away with the presidency uh, in the general election. That's if the election were tomorrow. Obviously, there's a long road to the coronation. A lot of different things can happen. But to put things in context for your viewers and listeners, Joe Biden is literally at the worst ever point of any president at this point in American political history. Uh, he's down at 37% approval, uh, and that's actually with a probably a, a more positive ABC Washington Post polling, as opposed to I've seen other um, right-of-center pollsters who have Joe Biden even lower. And part of the reason on that is the floor, uh, we don't exactly know where that is because Joe Biden doesn't have the traditional level of support with Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, and others in fact, President Trump got, did record well uh, as far as with those communities this last election. So Biden could even go lower, and we'll see as this uh, Ukraine mess uh, carries on uh, how much uh, Joe Biden's numbers could be impacted there, too. And I suspect I know the answer to this question, but do you think this Ukraine mess would be happening if Trump was in charge still? No, and I'll tell you the reason why is because with President Trump, there was a leader in the White House who there, uh, issued a strong sense of deterrence, uh, who people were actually uh, worried that if they went and crossed America or if they went and launched some sort of attack or attacked one of our allies, that there would be repercussions. With Joe Biden, not only is he leading from behind, but he's following around every other leader who seems to want to be the tip of the spear. Uh, for example, this weekend, President Trump was out giving speeches, talking about his vision, defending Western civilization, criticizing Putin, uh, supporting the people of Ukraine, but even talking about that more broader challenge of the head-to-head -head matchup with China, and Joe Biden took the weekend off. He was at his beach house in Delaware. Um, I don't know if he was sleeping, or I can't imagine he was he was awake all that much. Um, and, you know, Ostensibly, he was working on a State of the Union speech, which of course is coming up here later this evening in the U.S., uh, but, but Joe Biden is, is not projecting a strong image of confidence, and quite frankly, I think Putin made his decision to go to Ukraine when he saw Biden make his decision, decision to have the a disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. So Trump wouldn't have withdrawn from Afghanistan, do you think? Well, he no, he President Trump said he would withdraw, but very simply, first you get out all of the U.S. citizens and all of the uh, dependents, the people in Afghanistan who've been working for us for the better part of 20 years, uh, people who would most definitely be in the crosshairs by the Taliban if they were captured afterwards. So first you get them out, then you go and get out all of your key sensitive military equipment, your files, uh, the updated machinery, the things like that. And then at, uh, at the final, at the end, then you get out your, the rest of your troops. But what you don't do is get the troops out first, then leave the people behind. But all during that process, you send a very clear message uh, to the Taliban that if you mess with any of our people on the way out, we're going to drop a bomb on you. And in fact, President Trump, I know, told the leader of the Taliban when he was talking to him and making some similar type comments when he was president of the United States, uh, he informed the leader of the Taliban exactly where that leader was at that moment. And President Trump said, we know exactly where you are. And if you attack our people and mess with them, there's going to be hell to pay. And guess what? Uh, they didn't attack because they knew there'd be a big, huge bomb with their name written all over it, dropping right on their head. Well, if you enjoyed that conversation, why not watch one of these other videos? And while you're here, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll never miss out on a single IEA broadcast.